nitrogen dioxide reacts with reacts to form dinitrogen tetroxide in a sealed flask according to the following equation. And the equation is not there, but I will talk to you about how we can figure out the equation anyway. Yeah. So it's really this question. I was like, oh, this is a harder question because they haven't given you the equation. And then apparently I was supposed to give you the equation. But even if they didn't, you can achieve the answer anyway. OK, so we'll talk about it like that. Which graph best represents the rates of both the forward and reverse reactions when an equilibrium system containing these gases is called at time T? OK, We'll talk about the graph in a second, but first of all, help me with the equation here. What's nitrogen dioxide? N2O4. And to balance it out, you have a two over here. Okay. Now, they've told you that it's cooled, which means the temperature has gone down. Okay. So you need to be able to identify what's happening at the instant that the change has occurred. When they say it's cooled, that means that the temperature has gone down. For you to explain temperature changes and how it affects a reaction, you need to know whether or not it's endothermic or exothermic. The equation probably would have given it to you, but you can figure it out on your own. Okay, for a more complex reaction, it's a little bit more difficult, but um, because this is such a simple question, because this is such a simple equation, you can actually figure it out on your own. Okay, so just a bit of year 11 module four revision. Yeah, when you guys are breaking bonds, is that absorbing energy or releasing energy? Sorry, when I'm, yeah, when I'm breaking bonds, am I absorbing energy or releasing energy? Isn't that absorbing? Yeah, good. When I'm breaking a bond, I need to be absorbing energy. And when I'm making a new bond, I need to be releasing energy. Okay, so the reason this question is pretty simple is because all you're doing is combining two NO2s together to form a single N2O4, which means the reverse reaction is you're breaking the N2O4 apart to make an NO2, which means if the reverse reaction is breaking your bigger molecule, N2O4, um, that's going to be endothermic. So this way is going to be absorbing energy. And if it's absorbing energy, your delta H is positive or negative. If it's absorbing energy, it's endothermic. So delta H is positive. positive. Yeah, positive, which means this forward reaction is going to be negative. The reason I talk to you about the reverse reaction first is because it's a little bit easier to think about breaking bonds and absorbing energy than combining something together to release energy. Yeah. So that's why it's it's just a little bit easier to talk about absorb and then think about the reverse. So um, delta H is negative for your forward reaction. Now, there's a few just general rules you want to know just so that it's easier for you to interpret these graphs. Anytime you're decreasing temperature, according to collision theory from year 11, module three, your reaction rate is going to decrease. Okay, this is regardless of whether or not it's endothermic or exothermic. Yeah, if you are decreasing temperature, the reaction rate is going to decline. Um, and if you're increasing temperature, the reaction rate is going to increase for both the forward and the reverse reactions. Okay, so the direction is the same. It's just the magnitude that changes. Yeah, so like your vector stuff from your level, from our maths. Okay, the direction is the same. It's just the magnitude that changes, which means when something's cooling, when the temperature changes, okay, if you're doing a multiple choice question and then the temperature changes, then you have to cross out anything where the reaction rates are going in the opposite direction. Okay, so in this case, I immediately cross out A and B because one of them's going down, the other one's going up. Okay, but for you to reestablish equilibrium, guys, if both of them, you know that for you to reestablish equilibrium, the rate's going to shift one way and then away from the other one, right? Which means that for you to reestablish equilibrium, even if you even if even if you don't realize that temperature affects one reaction more than the other, just from knowing that they go in the same direction, but they have to reestablish equilibrium, that has to mean that one rate has to slow down more than the other, because then they have to converge again to get to your equilibrium stage. Okay, the temperature that sorry, the reaction that's more sensitive to temperature is your endothermic reaction, okay? And that goes for both ways. If you're decreasing temperature and the rate goes down, the endothermic reaction rate will go down more. If you're increasing temperature and the reaction rates go up, your endothermic reaction rate will also go up more, okay? The reason for that 
is because endothermic reactions, by definition, they absorb energy, which means if there's a change in energy, that that reaction is just going to be more sensitive to it because it needs energy for the reaction to happen. An exothermic reaction does not require energy to happen. It actually has too much energy, so it's going to be releasing it into the environment. So an exothermic reaction does not rely on energy to happen. So regardless of whether or not there's high or low temperature, it, it's going to be able to happen. Okay, so that rate isn't as sensitive to temperature changes. So in this case, when the temperature goes down, the um, endothermic reaction is going to go down even more. And then if temperature goes up, the endothermic reaction is going to go up even more as well. So because the endothermic reaction is the reverse reaction, you should see the reverse reaction rate going down further. And then the exothermic reaction rate also going down, but not going down as much. Okay, so your answer for this one, because we've already crossed out A and B, the endo the reverse reaction is your endothermic one, so it goes down more, and that's your dotted line. And so your answer for this one has to be D, 